Good morning, boys and girls. Welcome to class. Today is Wednesday, April 29th. We're going to get started with our phonics. Okay, and this week we've been focusing on adding syllables to make words that with multiple or more than one syllable. Let's take a look at these words, okay? We're gonna look at them one by one, and we're gonna be taking away a portion of the word so that we start off with only one syllable. So let's go over the words first, and I will underline them as we go, I say them. Okay, this one is toothbrush, playground, Eyelash, basketball, thunder. Okay, so let me erase the lines I made so we can get started. Okay, so what we did under the word toothbrush is as you can see. I only left the word brush. Brush. How many syllables is that? Brush. Put your hand underneath your chin. Brush. How many times do you feel your chin go down? How many vowels are in this word? What are the vowels? A E I O U. Mm, so how many vowels? One. So how many times did you feel your chin go down? If you said that brush only has one syllable, you are correct. So how can we change this word and add another sound to make it two syllables? Well, Here's the second part of the word. So now we have tooth brush. So let's put our hand under our chin. Tooth brush. Now how many syllables do you see or do you hear? Tooth brush. If you said two syllables, good job. All right, the next one is the word playground. So we took the second part of the word out. So this is the word play. Let's see how many syllables you hear. Play. Okay, that's how many syllables? Very good if you said one. Play. And then ground. How many syllables do you have when you put it together? Play ground. If you said two, you are correct. If you didn't, that's okay. We're still practicing, okay? Next word is eyelash. So we kept I. So let's put our hand under our chin. I, how many syllables? Very good, one, I, and then lash. So that is how many syllables? If you said two, good job. This word is basketball. So we kept the ball part. So how many syllables are in ball? Ball. If you said one, good job. So now let's say it to let's add the other part. Basket, 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 ball. How many syllables? Basket, ball. How many vowels do we have here in basket? A-E-I-O-U. 
so here's A and E, okay, and I'll do it here too. A and E are vowels and the A, right? How many vowels do you see? Three. How many times does your chin go down? Let's try it. Bass, get, ball. Basketball has three syllables. Good job. All right. The next one is thunder. We left dur. And we're going to put thun in. So first, I think you guys are starting to see something, right? I'm kind of showing you guys a little trick. First, let's count the syllable, the vowels in the word thunder. U and E. <clears throat> so without even trying it, how many syllables do you think the word's going to have? Let's try it. Hand under your chin. Thun. Dur. How many syllables? If you said to you are correct. Okay, so you, I'm sure you noticed that when we were practicing, every time that a word had a syllable, um, a vowel, you felt your chin go down, right? So that can help you also. If you see the vowels, be prepared to pay attention to see if your chin goes down. That means that that counts as one syllable. Very good. And that is it for today for phonics. Okay. Um, I want you to try this at home. So what we did is we used, I used words of things or items or anything that you can find in your home that has one or two syllables. If you want to find those items and you can share them with me, if you have time, that's just a, a fun kind of scavenger hunt kind of activity, okay? You don't have to do that, but um, let's, let's try it. All right, very good. So it's time for reading, so let's go ahead and Pause the video and um, start it when you're ready for reading time. Okay, so welcome to reading. This week we're focusing on main or central idea, right? Okay, so our story that we listened to yesterday, um, the title of it was How to Read a Story. So I hope you like that story um, and it kind of, it's also kind of sequence of events, which is what we kind of finished off of last week. So I wanted to also use that one to show you that, that, that that's also a sequence of events book, okay? So let's go ahead and start with this week's lesson. And um, to do that, I'm going to have you listen to the book again, okay? How to Read a Story, written by Kate Messner, illustrated by Mark Siegel. Step 1. Find a story. A good one. It can have princesses and castles, if you like that sort of thing. Or witches and trolls, as long as they're not too scary. Step two, find a reading buddy, a good one. A buddy can be older or younger, or a person your age, or maybe not a person at all. Make sure your reading buddy is nice and snuggly, and make sure you both like the book. If you don't agree, go back to step one. Sometimes it takes a few times to find just the right book. 
Step 3. Find a cozy reading spot. Outside is fun, but not if it's very cold. Unless you have thick woolen blankets and hats and scarves and cups of steaming hot cocoa. And not if it's very hot. Unless you have trees to shade you from the sun, a hammock to catch cool breezes, and tall glasses of icy lemonade. Inside is good. Couches are cozy. So are chairs big enough for two. Just be careful not to get stuck. Step four, look at the book's cover. Can you guess what it's about? Read the title. That might be a clue. Step five, open the book. This is the exciting part. Read the story in a loud, clear voice. Not too slow and not too fast. You can point to words if you like, but you don't have to do that. Step six. When the characters talk, whatever's being said, say it in a voice to match who's talking. I will save the kingdom. I am the most powerful in all the land. I'm hungry for lunch. Soon the castle will be mine. Beep. Step seven. No matter what you read, hold the book so your buddy can see the pictures. Buddies get impatient when they can't see well. Step eight. If there are words you don't know, try sounding them out or looking at the pictures to see what makes sense. They were afraid the dragon would burn down the cast, cast, oh, the castle. If you need a break, you can pause for a minute and talk to your reading buddy to predict what might happen next. Will the castle catch on fire? Will the princess tame the dragon? Will the robot marry the princess? Will the horse make friends with the dragon? Will the dragon eat them all for lunch? Step nine. When you get to the exciting parts, make your voice sound exciting too. Who dares disturb me in my cave? The dragon growled. Oh dear. Oh no! The robot was so scared all his metal parts rattled. What would they do? But the princess tackled that dragon and held him down. You must promise you'll leave our kingdom in peace. When you and your buddy can't stand it a second longer, turn the page to read how things work out. Step 10. When the book is over, say, The End. And then, if it was really a good story, go right back to the beginning. All right. So this is the book that we're going to be using to try to help us with finding the main or the central idea of the book okay so when we're looking for the main or central idea of a story the first step is you always want to look at the title the title is right here how to read a story now, is the t title always going to tell you the main idea? No, okay? So that's why as the lesson goes on, we're gonna learn how to look inside the story and read it over and over until we can find out the main idea, okay? But that's always the first step. Step one, when you're looking for a main idea, you want to look at the title how to read a story okay so 
step two when you're looking for main idea or central idea. While you're reading the story, it's important to try to listen for the person, place, or thing that the story is about, okay? Again, the person, place, or thing that the story is about will help you also find the main idea. So let's look at step one. The title of this book is How to Read a Story. <laughs> Does that tell us what the story is going to be mainly about? Okay. If you said yes, you're correct. Okay. Also, step two. When we were reading the story, was the book about a person. There were characters in the book, but was it about one person? Did we have a character with a name and that's what the whole book was about? No, we did not. So the book's not about a person. <laughs> was it about a place? The story had places or setting, but the whole book was not about a place in the story. Was the book about a thing, something? Okay. Is learning or is how to read a story? Is it something that you can do? something that this whole book was about? If you said yes, you are correct, okay? So when you were looking for the main idea or the central idea, like we have been, like we're gonna start to, those are the steps that you wanna take for now, okay? You want to ask yourself, First, what is the title? What, what does the title have to do with the book? Again, some books will not, the title will not tell you what the whole book is about, okay? So that's why you also have to do step two. You have to find the person, people, place, or thing that the book is mainly about. Okay, so do you, do, I hope that makes sense. Now, how would you write it in here? <laughs> okay, this is what I wrote. The main idea is learning how to read a book. Okay, does that sound right? Did the book tell us how to read a book or a story? Yes. Okay. All right. So you're not going to complete this today. Okay. Until tomorrow, I'm going to give you this activity because tomorrow we're going to go over what comes after you find the main idea. Okay. Okay. So let's go ahead and get ready for math and social studies. So go ahead and pause the video and don't start it until you're ready for math and social studies. Okay, welcome to math and social studies. We are still focusing on money. So before we start, go grab your coins. We'll wait for you. Pause the video. Don't run. Don't, don't run all over your house to get your coins. Just Pause it and then we'll, we'll wait for you here, okay? We'll be here when you come back. Okay, so if you don't have coins, that's okay. You can, I'll share these coins with you. So we've been working on combining coins to get totals, correct? Okay, so I've been trying to show you guys different ways that you can figure this out. 
Now I understand that it's kind of hard to like look at this and want to start counting by fives here and here and then count by ones the rest of the way. Okay, I'm, I'm sure because you only see one object here. You don't see five things here. So I'm sure it doesn't make sense, but you have to remember that five of these pennies are all in this silver coin, okay? And it's a silver coin with Thomas Jefferson, so you know it's five cents, right? Okay, so here's another way you can do it, okay? You can write five on top to remind yourself like, oh yeah, oh, I have to count by fives. And then here you can put one, so you can remind yourself, oh, it's just one, no mas uno, just one, okay? So I put skip counting by fives down here so that we can do that with the fives. So let's start. So we have two nickels, so it's five, 10, right? And then what comes after 10, the number 10 when you're counting by ones? So after 10 is 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, yes, you say 18, let's see, good job, yes, so remember when you're writing cents, you want to put your decimal there, and then some of you will remember that this is a cent sign, okay, this tells us that it's cents, that it's coins, that it's not dollars, okay, all right, you got it? All right, if you want to practice more with your coins at home, you can pause it. If not, if you think you got this and you're ready to continue, let's continue. Okay, here we have, what is this? A nickel. How many cents? Well, five, right? So you only see one nickel. So these are counting by ones, right? So here's another way you can do it. If you know this is five, what's the number that comes after after five? Six, right? So right here, I'm gonna, this is where we are right now. This is five. But then we're not gonna continue from here to 10 because there's not another nickel. We're gonna continue from five to count the pennies that are only one cent, right? And we need to do one, two, three, four, five, six. So I could say one, two, three, four, five. What's after 10? So we need to hop from here all the way over here. But we're gonna start with five because we have a nickel. So it's five. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So, how many cents do you think we have? I you said eleven, you are correct, but I am missing a few things. Decimal. And what am I missing? Um, let me see. Let me call on somebody. So, Maria, what am I missing? The cent sign. Mm, yeah, you guys better be paying attention. I'm still keeping an eye on you. All right. If you want to practice more, pause it and uh, practice with your coins. If you're good, then this is what you have. This is waiting for you in Seesaw.
okay? And make sure to use your coins. I put it on here so that if you want to first look at it at your computer and then work on practicing with your coins and then plug in your answers on Seesaw, that's fine, okay? So this is, again, counting nickels and pennies, combining them to see what their totals are, okay? Down here, make sure to read the instructions, okay? So it says, work out the correct totals for these coins. Remember to count the nickels and fives. So it, this is asking you if you have two nickels plus one penny. So what you want to do here is you want to put your nickels and then your one penny. How much do you have in nickels? Five. Five. Plus how many pennies? Liam, how many pennies? Okay, all right, very good. One penny. See, I'm still watching you guys. All right, so that's how you do one. Now the rest is all yours, okay? And that's it, boys and girls. That's all we have for today. This activity is waiting for you on Seesaw when you're ready to submit it. And that's it. Have a great day.